Today we're going to take a look at the plexus effect, which if you're not familiar, this is an effect where you have a bunch of points floating around in space and you dynamically connect them with lines based on the proximity from one point to another. Now I'm not entirely sure where the name plexus comes from, other than it's associated with this library of After Effects scripts. And whenever I hear somebody talking about this in regards to 3D graphics, they're usually referring specifically to this dot connecting effect. So I'm going to continue calling it the plexus effect, and let's see how we can make this in Blender. So hi, yes, hello everyone. I'm Gavin.js. Let's hop into it. Now I do have to say, this is something that you can do without repeat nodes. In fact, there is this really good tutorial by Intagma where they go through using a bunch of function nodes. It's a really good tutorial for a more technical deep dive into the data that you need to drive this sort of effect. But today we have Blender 4.0 and instead of doing a repeat of their tutorial, I want to take a look at how we can do this with the repeat nodes. Because I think when we're working with the repeat nodes, it can be a lot easier easier to understand how our data is flowing and what's going on. And due to that clarity, I think it becomes a lot easier to then add complexity to this effect. Anyway, enough talking, let's hop into Blender. All right, so jumping into Blender, we're just going to go ahead and delete our camera and light, but we're going to leave the default sphere because we'll be using it a little bit later. So let's just toggle that off for now and let's create a plane. And with that plane selected, let's create a new set of geometry nodes. I'm just going to call this plexus effect. And let's start off by creating some points. And to make it so that we can visualize what we're doing, I'm going to just give them a whole bunch of random positions. And then we'll come back to that later to animate everything. We're going to create an integer to drive the number of points, as well as the number of iterations for our repeat nodes. So let's just create 10 points. And now we can jump into our repeat zone and start making this effect. So in order to make our plexus effect, what we need to do is look at each point one at a time and measure the distance from it to every other point. So in order to do this, we're going to drop in two sample index nodes. And we're going to need a little bit more space, so I'm just going to drag these over here for now. And let's give ourselves a little bit more room because we don't super need to see what's going on in the viewport for a little bit because we're going to be working largely with the hypothetical for a hot second. There's a lot of math that we're going to have to put in before we actually see anything worthwhile in the viewport. So we need two sample index nodes and we need to drop in a position node and we need to switch both of these to sample vectors. And then we need an index node, and we're only going to plug our index into this bottom sample index. Next, we need a math node, and this is what's going to help us keep track of which point we're looking at. Since we can control the number of iterations based on the number of points, we know that we'll be looping for each point. But in order to keep track of which point we're currently looking at in the current loop, we need to plug in a math node that's going to add one every iteration. That way we know we'll be starting at zero and we can plug that value into the index of our first sample index node. And then we'll take this math node and run its value all the way into the end here. That way each iteration we're adding one to this value so that the first one we're going to sample zero, like I said, the next iteration we're going to look at index one and so on and so forth. In fact, I'm going to do something that's pretty common in programming and change the name of this attribute to count. That way we know it's counting our iterations. Let's just drag that over to the side and again, give us a little bit more space. I like to keep things nice and compact, but this is going to be kind of an expansive node network. I'm also going to drag these down a little bit uh, and try to make things nice and visible and keep everything organized because it's really easy to get these nodes all cluttered up and I want it to be clear what's going on here. Next, we're going to add in a couple of vector math nodes and we're going to change this first one to distance because what we want to do is take the distance between our two sampled points so that we can compare that distance to some threshold to determine whether or not we're going to connect our points. 
So let's drop in a compare node and a value node. And this value node we could replace with a group input node. I'm just going to leave it as a value node for now. But if you wanted all of your controls to be in the modifiers panel, that's what you'd want to do. So okay, let's take our distance and run it into our compare node along with our value. And let's just set that to an arbitrary value of 2. Now we're going to drop in one more compare node because we want to make sure that our current iteration and whatever index we're currently looking at are not the same. So let's take our index node, run that into our compare node, and in fact we're going to change this to integer as well as our count. So let's change this from greater than to not equal. Now we're going to add in a boolean math node, leave it at and, and run both of our comparison nodes into that and node. Now I did say that we're going to need a couple of vector math nodes, and we'll get back to that here in just a second. For now we're going to create an instance on points node, and take our geometry and run that into points. Then we're going to run our and node into our selection, and again that's just to make sure that both our distance is less than, ooh, ha, less than or equal to our value, and we're not comparing the distance between the same point. Next, we're going to bring in a mesh line and run that into instance. And this can be either a mesh line or a curve line. It doesn't really matter. Uh, both will work. It's just whether or not you'll want a curve or a mesh for your output. Now we can bring in a second vector math node because we don't just need the distance between our points. We also need to know the direction going from one point to the other. So we're going to change this to subtract and then we can run both of our vectors into that subtract node. Now that we've got that direction, we just need to normalize it. And let's make a little bit more room here and drop in an align Euler to vector node. We're gonna take our normalized vector and plug it into the vector and then change this from X to Z and then take the resulting rotation and plug it into the rotation on our instance on points node. Then we just need a join geometry node and we're going to run our instances into that node and create a new geometry output. We're then going to take this newly created input and run it into the join geometry. This is just to keep our newly instanced lines separate from our points because later we're going to be doing different things with these two different sets of geometry, and instead of combining them just to separate them back out later, we're just going to keep them separate from the get-go. Now we're not done here, but let's just take a look at the resulting geometry by switching from our initial geometry to our newly created geometry. And we can see, yeah, we've got a whole bunch of lines. So a couple things we need to do to fix this. I forgot to change the count on our mesh line down to two because we're in the offset, and we can use offset or endpoints, it's just we we only need two points right now. So now all of our lines have a length of one, but we need to scale all of them. We, we rotated them so that they're all facing the right way. If we hadn't have done that, they'd all be vertical because our initial mesh line is just a vertical line. So let's plug that rotation back in. And now what we can do is take our distance and plug that directly into scale. And now all of our lines perfectly fit between all of our initial points. But if we take a look at our spreadsheet, we see that we have 88 instances. And that's not exactly what we want or expect because we only created 10 points, right? How is it that we have 88 of these? Well, so part of that is because we're instancing multiple lines on each point, obviously. That's the whole reason for the effect. But also it's because we're taking a look at this point and then instancing a bunch of lines. And then we're taking a look at, say, this point and instancing a bunch of lines regardless as to whether or not we've already created a line that connects this point to this point. So each of these lines are actually two lines. So we have twice as much geometry as we need. Now I found two main ways to get rid of this problem and I'm sure that there are more optimized ways to do it. Like it'd be great if I could figure out how to check to see whether or not we ha already have a line in one spot. I just haven't had time to really suss that out. So instead of doing that, uh, the quick and dirty method is to just drop a merge by distance node in there. Now that doesn't work for our instances. We first have to add in a realize instances node before doing that. So now we can see we've got 10 verts, 44 lines, 
the number of verts is exactly what we would expect to see because that's how many we started off with. And yeah, that is our minimum amount of geometry. But it does add a whole bunch of extra calculation here. This is not super optimized if you're going to end up with a ton, a ton of geometry. I don't know that this would ever be super impactful for performance since it's not a terribly complicated effect. But just keep that in mind if you're really worried about performance, that this is a very unoptimized solution. The other solution, and the one that I'm going to be using for a couple of reasons, is to take all of our lines and instead of making them the full distance between our two points, we're just going to cut that distance in half. So right here in the middle of our network, we're going to add a math node and we're going to change that from add to divide, make it so that these aren't overlapping, and then change this to two. So it looks exactly the same, right? And we have the same number of instances, but each of these lines are half the distance. And in fact, if I turn this up to be greater than two, you can see that, yeah, we've got one line on each of our points pointing at all of the other points, or at least all of the other points that are within two units of, of each other. And I've got something else that I'm working on with the plexus effect where I actually really need this, which is why I'm opting for this option. For what we're doing today, it doesn't really matter, but I just kind of find it fun to know that I've got my midpoint nicely defined. Again, neither of these are the most optimal solution. These are just kind of my quick and dirty solutions to then move on and continue with making the effect. So unfortunately, while I just said let's continue with the effect, that's all I've got time for today. I wanted to go through the entire tutorial on how I made this really cool globe satellite effect, but really truly I just ran out of time. I do plan to return to this in the future and give you a full tutorial, but for now I'm going to have to leave you here. I'm glad I was able to at least finish the core of the tutorial because from here I'm just adding additional complexity and going through the look dev of all of this and it's really superfluous. This was really the core of the tutorial and how to get the plexus effect to work. And if you'd like to take a closer look both at this tutorial and the continuation on to the final product, you can find the blend file on my Patreon. It's still a little empty over there, but at least at time of recording, I have a few blog posts up there and I'll have this blend file up. So definitely check it out if you want to see a little bit more. But anyway, thank you all so much for watching. I hope this has been helpful and I will see you in the next one. Bye.